Pete showed you his uh, junk box rig and I figured I better produce something along the same lines. Here it is. I call it the Armand HRO-ish. Armand, uh, Armand is Armand Hamill uh, de Bay One UQO very kindly gave me this magnificent uh, HRO dial uh, that really became the, the reason for building the receiver. It's got a gearbox inside, really cool. It's a great reduction dot drive with a wonderful dial. Can't really see it here, but it has little numbers that pop up that let you know where you are in the band. This whole mess in the middle is the VFO. I spent a lot of time and devoted a lot of space to the VFO to try to get it very stable. This is not a digital, this is an old school analog VFO with a very simple circuit. This box contains the frequency determining elements, the main, the coil and uh, the main tuning cap. Pop the hood, there's the cap, there's the coil, it's wound on a cardboard tube. You can see these caps, uh, these are just caps associated with the, the main tuned circuit, but you can see I used multiple um, individual caps to, and put them in parallel to spread the amount of capacitance out am among capacitors and that helps with stability because no individual cap heats up enough to really change the, the, uh, the resonant frequency. Everything is nailed down, glued down and secure. There's a lot of uh, clear nail polish varnish on the coil. Everything is very stable and really this hood is mostly for temperature stability. I'll put it back on. It just keeps uh, the, the breezes and the temperature uh, changes in the shack from affecting the, the coil. Most of the circuitry for the oscillator, you can't see it, but it's in this uh, Altoids tin. That's where the, uh, the circuit, the main oscillator circuit is. And I've even kept the, the Zener diode and the dropping resistor outside the box to keep the heat outside the box. That helps. This second Altoids box contains the, um, the buffer amp and the, uh, and the amplifier for the VFO circuitry. You can see it in there. And again, the, the separation seems to, seems to help reduces uh, heating on the, the elements that are determining the, the frequency of oscillation. The oscillator runs uh, fairly high up in the uh, 7.5 to 8 range around there. The IF is at 455 kcs, which I'll talk about in a minute. But let's go to the front end. I have a, uh, a tunable bandpass filter back in here. Tunable bandpass filter using a ganged uh, variable capacitor that I found at a ham fest. You can see me spin the thing around here. Really nice. And I've got basically uh, two um, uh, parallel tuned circuits. One using this nice uh, adjustable inductor that Michael Rainey gave me. The other on a toroid uh, wound to the same uh, inductance. And the adjustment lets me make sure that they're on the same frequency. So both these um, circuits are on the same frequency. I have a very small 2.2 picofarad capacitor connecting them and I get to peak it for uh, the, uh, the, fre the desired frequency. Um, after the bandpass filter I have a 40673 MOSFET provides a little bit of um, uh, pre-amplification and it also presents a very high impedance to the tuned circuits and keeps the Q high here. The, uh, the first mixer is an old SBL1 out of the uh, junk box. You can see the VFO energy comes in here. RF from the, uh, the front end comes in here. Okay, under here is the um, CM455 uh, uh, crystal mechanical filter from Toyo. I think it, we don't have a lot of information on it. I found some. But I think we, I estimated that it's got about a 1,000 uh, ohm input impedance. So I built a little L network to match the 50 ohms here to 1,000 ohm meters here. There's another L network here. This relay is so that I could eventually switch in a much broader filter because I'd like to be able to listen to AM and the 2.4 kilohertz from the CM455 filter. A little bit too tight for that. I have another. Zia amp after the filter. The, the BFO over here 
the BFO is built around this 455KC ceramic resonator that I had in the junk box. There's a, a couple of transistors here afterwards, one a buffer, an amplifier, and that sends the BFO energy to another SBL1, which is the product detector. So you have the 455KC IF and the BFO energy coming there, and you have audio coming out. This other relay here is because when I switch the um, the filters, I want to switch detectors too, and I want to go to a AM detector, perhaps a, a diode detector, but something that would be good for detecting the AM, not a product detector, because with the product detector you're always going to be listening to the carrier, unless you get right at zero B, and that's just a bit, a bit of a mess, so I want to be able to turn off the BFO and go to a, uh, an envelope detector of some sort. I have a couple of diodes over here right now, but they don't seem to be doing too well. This here is the amplifier, the audio frequency amplifier. It's, um, uh, it's not an LM386, not an op amp, individual discrete transistors, and it uses a complementary pair, 2N3904, 2N3906. No need for uh, audio frequency transformer. It's a neat little circuit that we used a lot in the Bidex rigs. All right, let's listen. Turn up the audio. Now I'll peak the... Um, uh, the preamplifier. 40 is noisy today. I got it set up. We're down at the bottom end of the uh, CW band. Wow, it sounds like a kind of a homebrew signal or an old rig. G5RB, 2000 something into a G5RB. Up 30 feet. Power. Sounds of CQ. NY2F. top of the band. Anyway, I'm having fun with this thing. It's not quite done yet. I got some problems. Got to work out. Got to arrange for the broader um, filter response. Get the diode detector going. And I think that um, I've got a problem. I think I have too much gain ahead of the mixer and strong signals in the band sometimes will overload the diode ring mixer. So I think I'm, I've got some dynamic range problems that probably could be taken care of just by a little bit less gain or uh, maybe a, a bit of an attenuator somewhere in here before the mixer. But anyway, that's it. Hope you guys like it. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.